Hello and welcome. This is a part of a series of short lessons that break down the AQA A-level biology unit called Biological Molecules. So biological molecules and we're looking at polysaccharides. Many monosaccharides can join to make polysaccharides. Polysaccharides are formed by the condensation of many glucose molecules. Examples of polysaccharides are starch, glycogen and cellulose and we need to know the detailed structure of each of those. Let's start off with starch. This is a storage carbohydrate in plants. It stores glucose, which can be used for respiration. It's a polysaccharide formed by condensation of many alpha-glucose units, many alpha-glucose monomers. We can find starch in plant cells. There you can see some dark-coloured starch grains, and that's where you might find them in a plant cell. And this is the structure of starch. We have many alpha-glucose molecules here, and as we said, we get the condensation of these glucose molecules with the removal of a molecule of water, and these will all join together to make a chain joined together by glycosidic bonds. We can simplify that diagram just by showing it like this, and we're going to do that when we look at the structure of starch. If we simplify, we can see there's two ways that the starch molecules are arranged. We have amylose on the left-hand side, and when it's branched, we have something called amylopectin. These two terms are not mentioned in the specification. However, you can be credited for their use in terms of the structure of starch. So, structure versus function of starch. Here we have our two ways that the starch molecules are arranged. This is amylose, as we said, and this is amylopectin. Firstly, starch is coiled or branched. That means it's compact, so you can store quite a lot of it in a small amount of space. Starch is insoluble, which means it does not affect the water potential of a cell. In other words, does not affect osmosis. It won't cause water to either move into or out of the cell. It's branched, or one version of it is branched. And that means that glucose is quickly and easily released for respiration. So if you look at the amylopectin, you can see there's lots of ends where the glucose can be released for respiration. And finally, it's a large molecule, which means once it's been stored away in a cell, it cannot pass the cell membrane, so cannot leave the cells. So these are the key things that we need to know about starch. Next, let's take a look at cellulose. This makes cell walls in plants. It's formed by the condensation of many beta-glucose molecules. So here are our beta-glucose molecules. The first thing to make a note of is the idea that alternate beta-glucose molecules are flipped by 180 degrees. So we can show that in the diagram like this. Every other glucose molecule is flipped by 180 degrees. We have our condensation reactions as before in these positions here. And then we have the formation of glycosidic bonds where the condensation reactions happened. So we can see we make a chain of beta-glucose molecules with their glycosidic bonds as shown. And we can simplify this diagram like so. As a result of the joining of beta-glucose molecules by condensation reactions, we get the formation of a straight chain. Cellulose is made of long, straight, unbranched chains of beta-glucose. The chains join together by hydrogen bonds to make structures called microfibrils. So here is a microfibril. And you can see there, there are hydrogen bonds holding those chains together. Hydrogen bonds are weak, but there are many of them to give collective strength. Here is the microfibril. I've just drawn three chains, but actually it's in the region of 30 or 40 chains joined together to make a microfibril. Many microfibrils join to make fibres, and there are many hydrogen bonds between the chains to give strength. Cellulose in plant cell walls provides strength and support. Here's our plant cell, and as you probably know, the cellulose cell wall is on the outside. So this is how the structure of cellulose gives that cell wall its strength for support. Let's take a look at glycogen. This is a storage carbohydrate found in animals. It's mainly found in muscles and liver. It's a polymer made of many alpha-glucose molecules. 
So here I've just gone to show the chain with its condensation reactions already done. And we've got many alpha glucose units joined by glycosidic bonds. Glycogen molecules have many more branches than starch molecules. So here is the structure of a glycogen molecule in a simplified way. The alpha glucose molecules can be used in respiration to provide energy when needed. Structure versus function of glycogen molecules. Firstly, it's coiled and branched, as you can see. That's so it's compact. In other words, a lot can be stored in a small amount of space. It's insoluble, which means it does not affect water potential, does not affect osmosis, does not cause the movement of water into or out of the cell. It's highly branched. There are more ends, so glucose is easily released by hydrolysis for respiration. So you can see here, there are many more ends than there were in our starch molecule. It's also a large molecule, so once it's been stored away inside cells, it can't leave the cells, so it stays in place, and that's always good for storage. So those are the three polysaccharides that we need to know. And just before we finish, let's have a quick summary of what we have gone through today. So we've got starch, cellulose, and glycogen. We can do a quick recap of the monomers, the function, the monomer arrangement, and where these structures are found. So if we start off with the monomers, starch is made of alpha glucose, cellulose is made of beta glucose, and glycogen is alpha glucose. The function for starch is it's a storage molecule. Cellulose is for strength and support, and glycogen is also a storage molecule. In terms of the monomer arrangement, in starch, it's either coiled or it's branched. In cellulose, we have straight chains of beta glucose, and in glycogen, it's highly branched. And starch is found in plants and algae. Cellulose is found in plants and algae too. And glycogen is found in animals only. Uh, that's pretty much it for today's video. Do like and subscribe if you found this useful. Other than that, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.